Good evening, good evening. We told you the guys there was gonna be a whole bunch of changes, a whole lot of changes. Welcome changes. You know, we've been talking about this for a little while, but yes, you know, now it's finally that you guys get to find out about it. So welcome to the focus. As I told you last week, there is no more my mind on sports on Bliss FM. There's still my mind on sports, of course. Just not on Bliss FM. This is now the focus on Bliss FM. Um, Carter, you wanna tell them about how you know you came up with the name The Focus? Um, <laughs> it's just a common name that I felt you know, you need in all sports, you got to have them focus to win to play at your maximum best. So, you know, I thought it was a good fit. And um, that's what our show is about, covering all sports within the area. So, you know, perfect relationship. It definitely is. And uh, one of the things that, that, that I like the most about the name was that it, it applies to the, the coverage of sports. Right. To, it, like perfectly to the coverage of sports. We got a lot of things going on where a lot of people looking for breaking news and, and trying to find different things out of nothing. A lot of sensationalism. And whatnot. Um, you guys already know we're, we're not really a part of that. My mono sports and my guy over here at Finest Mega, you guys not big fans of that either, right? No, I gotta be authentic, man. Yeah. Just, just put it out there real. So, what we're gonna do here is yeah, we'll talk about sports, obviously, but uh, we're gonna try to uh, taint, not taint, but uh, simmer down some of that crazy perspectives that people have. And no, this is not gonna be a debate show. I know you see the two of us here. Um, <laughs> We, we do disagree quite often, and that's why it's going to be fun. I told you guys when, you know, it used to be my model sports on Bliss FM every time Cardell came in. We often disagree, and I enjoy disagreeing with him because I usually learn something. So, so it's, it's always fun. And we get to see back to see who's right and wrong. And that's a, that's, I think that's the best part about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually me, but go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, look, man. Look, see, we said it's not a debate. You start already. <laughs> um, also, you should follow us on social media. Obviously, if you already follow us on My Model Sports, please continue to do so. Uh, as we tell you, every time Cardell's a guest, they can follow you where? At Finest Magazine. And that now they can follow you where? At, where else? The Focus TV. The Focus TV on Instagram. Is this that simple? And it's Twitter. pretty. It's the same thing on Twitter. Like My Model Sports, like Finest Mag. We try to make it very easy for you guys. No, there isn't going to be a website. We, we're going to take care of the digital stuff the, the way that we've always taken care of it. But every week, we're going to come in here. Uh, we're going to talk with you guys. Gonna gonna continue to uh, put up this great content that that we do, and um just try to just try to talk sports man in a different type of tone that uh some other people do it. You have anything else to add? Nah, Focus, that's it. it. All right. That being said, we're gonna take a quick break. When we quick when we get back, we're gonna jump into some local news. We're gonna talk about the Redskins who's coming off a bye week. We're gonna talk about the Ravens a little bit, and then uh college basketball is is. It is essentially started. I think it's safe yeah. to say it started. This pretty week. much started. Yeah, this okay. week is on. So, you know, everybody knows about the Veteran Day games. Mm -hmm. But, you know, exhibitions have been played by many teams, um, especially local, local teams. Yeah. Um, so, over at Finest Mag, they take care of basketball on every single level. And they're the best in the area at that. So, what they're going to do uh, with Cardell being here, him being half of this show, we get to sit back and you guys get to do what I do, which is go over to Finest Mag and just click stuff, sit back to my delight and watch. You guys don't even have to go all the way over there. On Tuesday nights, you can just come here. Just come here. Now, every other day of the week, please go to Finest Mag. I need you to do that. And after that, you can go to My Model Sports. So you can switch it up however you want. But I need y'all to do that. One, two, together, and then the focus. You know, can't, can't lose sight of things. Right here at the focus, we're going to take, take our first break. Right here on the focus on bliss.fm.
Welcome back to the focus. I think I tell you, you got her fingers mixed up between two and one. But um, y'all gonna see that on Instagram there next break. I'm gonna try to be mature at the moment. But um, there was definitely a miscommunication <laughs> or some type of was, was that like a steal home? <laughs> was it hit and run on? Oh, you can't respond. You can respond in the next segment. This is so great. This is so great. As we promised, we're gonna take a quick look at some of the some of the local action in sports, whether it be professional, collegiate. Um, and there are times we're gonna talk about high school too because we got we got all things basketball in the building yeah. on an everyday basis. Um, so today we're gonna to take a look at the Ravens. Redskins, you guys had a bye week, so congratulations. You come out the bye week. I believe you're playing Minnesota this week. Um, we'll have someone talking more. We have our guy Jamal talking about that more on mymonosports.com. You guys already know where to go for that. He's been doing a great job with Redskins content. So I'm not gonna talk about it at all because that's what Jamal's there for. And I don't want wait, wait him to waste his time writing. For a Baltimore standpoint, big win for Baltimore. They beat their, I guess, arch nemesis. Can we say that with the Steelers? Yeah. Rivals, your enemies, 21-14. So it was a good win. Joe Flacco was 18 for 30, 241 yards. You know, they fired the offensive coordinator like a few weeks ago for like, I feel like the second straight season or the second time in three years where the Ravens fire uh, offensive coordinator midseason. And the last time it happened, things got better offensively. Uh, but we'll see what happens as things go. You got to give it a couple of weeks to work. I know last week some people were still complaining um, that they weren't fans of it. Shout out to Mike Wallace. We had a Mike Wallace site, and he saw his old team, and he was like, hey, remember me? Still run kind of fast. Mm -hmm. four, yard, uh, four catches, 124 yards, one touchdown on six targets. That's a pretty efficient day. Got thrown there six times, four catches, buck 24. Not bad. And uh, being against your old team, I think it makes everything that much better. Yeah. You know, bragging rights and such. But on the Washington Wizards, man, we're going to slide right over into that, that part of local sports. Congratulations to Mr. John Wall, um, a.k.a. Optimus Dime, one half of the House of Guards. Um, you know, one of, the better, one of the better playmakers in this NBA, in the association. Uh, you and I, during preseason, thumbing through uh, one of those uh, preseason media guys, right. noticed that he was just a few assists away. Yeah, so um, how many games did we, did we think he was going to take? I, I think he beat us, right? Yeah. I think he beat us. I kind of had it a little bit sooner, but, you know. Oh, you had it sooner? I had Because it. he had an injury. You know, he had to sit right, out right, a couple. Okay. So, okay. But, yeah, regardless, he broke it. Congrats to him. Um, but, you know, we knew it was coming. Right. But, I mean, at the same time, because you have a lot of people talk about John and, you know, whether right or wrong, everybody has an opinion on it. Right. And I think I just wanted to bring up the record just because a lot of times we hear John didn't improve here. John hasn't gotten better. Or, you know, we always talk about John's limitations, quote-unquote limitations, when – as a playmaker, you're already a franchise, the franchise leader in assist, and not being you're not steals, 30. You're on the way to steals, yeah. Not being steals, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that just shows you how well-rounded he is, and that's why I always stick up on not a lot of players bring everything he brings to. They're usually one or two-dimensional. And um, the only other point guard I can kind of even put in the same category with him that affects the game in, you know, totality is uh, Russell Westbrook, mm -hmm. you know, and – I mean, defense, he's on point. Um, he can score the ball, obviously, averaging 10 assists for the past couple of seasons. He's just, he's up there in steals. You know, he he does it all. I mean, um, the only knock you can kind of say, well, they say he can't shoot, but you have to defend it because he, he's getting better and better every season. So, I mean, it's never been a Rondo type thing where you just walk away from him. Yeah, no, nah, man, you got to defend him. You got to play defense on him. So, as long as you have that, you know, that means it's respectable. And with that being said, only knock you can honestly a little bit say is, you know, the turnovers. But I see him pressing more because they have a bad start. Mm -hmm. And it's just natural. You don't feel you can count on certain guys, so you're going to try to do more so you can win the game. So I'm not knocking him with that. Um, you know, obviously it needs to go down, but guys need to step up and help him. And, Speaking you know, of guys, uh, we, we were both big advocates. Uh, Tomas needs to play. Tomas is the best backup point guard on the roster. Right. Tomas needed minutes way before game six, right. which was last night. They fell to the Rockets um, after having a lead, yeah. which has been kind of a big thing for them is they play well enough to get a lead and then can't finish the job. And a lot of times, you know, you can, you can, you can simply point to the box score and say it could be turnovers. Mm -hmm. um, it could be lack of execution offensively. Simple, sim or even a simple thing is just missed shots. But at least for me personally, I think one of the things is I think they will get better the more Tomas is on the court, even right. getting mixed in with the starters. And especially with the second unit, he provides a calming influence. You know, prior to him getting his minutes, it was the second unit was very erratic. I mean, that's his his main talent. He makes guys better. 
and he's not afraid to defend, and he kind of has a um, a competitiveness that remind me of you know Ginobili when he first came in. A lot of people ain't know who he was till he dunked on a few cats, and they're right. like, oh, you know. That's the kind of flair I see with him as he get more comfortable with guys. I can see him doing having the same type of impact. So, um, we we you know since preaching like you said we've been advocates. He should have been getting minutes. You know I'm not gonna get on that with Brooks. You know what I'm saying? But now that he's in, you see the difference. They're actually in games now. They just have to close them, mm-hmm. and that's more to me defense because. I mean, James Harden, obviously, he's a dog. He's a problem. You I mean, know, he, he made a pretty some good tough job shots, on him for a while. But, you know, I mean, when you're making shots on wall, when wall is draped over you, that's a tough shot. You, you shake his hand. But when he's splitting double teams <laughs> and no one's there to block the shot, that's defense, not rotating. So those are little things they have to clean up. They want to win. Otherwise, you know, the slag going to happen. And, and um, with the Celtics and, you know, LeBron coming to town, they need to get it together quick. I was going to get ugly. Another thing that we both talked about was, uh, I remember we were at, in preseason, one of the games talking about how the roster was going to form out. Mm-hmm. And we found out who made the final 15, 13, 15, whatever right. the roster was. And one of the biggest things we looked at, again, advocates for Johnny O'Brien needing another athletic or just, you, it couldn't hurt when looking at the type of bigs that they had on the team. Mm-hmm. It felt that you definitely could use another athletic one. Yeah, he's right. kind of raw, but when you're just talking about the rim protection and being able to slide over, to, to impact that part of the game, especially you just mentioned Harden splitting the double. Mm-hmm. You split the trap or split the double, and no one's there to protect the rim. Or the, the rim protector's slow or, you know, he's just a Euro step away from a finish um, versus it being somebody where you pause, you hesitate, then the, the guards are able to come back down, and now that person's trapped in the paint. You know, none of that's happening. I mean, you need athleticism down there. We all know that. It's more than just having bigs. They got to be bigs that has um, good timing with blocking shots and they can jump. Um, Gortat, I mean, people don't know he's averaging about 12 balls a game. People don't even know that. He, like, he's he's doing what he has to do, but he's not a leaper. He's not a shot blocker, and he's older. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if he get in foul trouble or whatnot, who's going to step up and help, you know, coming off the bench? And that's the, you know, people dismiss Ian Mahimi, but obviously they need him. I mean, you know, he's huge right now, yeah, now that he's not in. Because you see the glaring weakness where he can fill that void and help them win games. So, I mean, yeah, they they got to figure out something. Cause it's, and, and, the, and the thing is, you can watch the games and know the rest of the league knows coming in. There is no rim protection. They just drive. Because it wasn't just hard. And it was the rolls in. Mm-hmm. It, it was plenty of guys. It's been every night. Before. It's yeah. been somebody else. Um, the other thing is, obviously, and we're not going to talk about anybody specifically, but just talking about some of the other youngsters playing since Tomas is getting minutes. Um, yeah. We're talking about what could help. That could be the thing. We're talking about defensive lapses and sometimes the defensive intensity not being where it needs to be. I mean, Brad said something to that effect about, you know, if you don't want to do those things, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember the exact quote, mm-hmm. but you can go to find his mag on IG uh, yeah. to have the exact quote there. Um, again, paraphrasing that, you know, if, if you're in the game and you don't want to do what needs to be done, somebody else is ready to do it. Like, it might be time for those little kids to get in there. Yeah. Some of the McClellans. Um, again, like, it Dang just might out. be time. They need to get out there because they've tried the other way so far. And it hasn't worked. It's one in five. And as you say, you can't go one in seven right now. No, it's you not can't. a good look. Yeah, that's that's gonna be bad, real bad. And um, you know, Bill in his own way was basically saying that, like, don't blame the coach on this, it's us. Mm-hmm. And I respect that because to me, too often across the league they blame coaches. I'm like, no, these players are getting paid a lot of money. They played a lot, okay. lot of high level basketball. It's certain things they should know automatically that they need to do. And the coach shouldn't have to get on you for staying in front of your man or rotating or communicating, talking on defense, diving for the loose ball, you know, sacrificing getting that rebound. Those are little things that help you win, and those are the little things that's costing the Wizards Ws. Very, very well said, sir. Uh, moving on to college. Okay. Can I ask you first? You cover a whole lot of college <laughs> basketball, man. So I guess today the level we're going to start at, we're going to start with uh, PG today. Yeah, um, yeah Maryland Juco. Um, you know, definitely try to give them a lot of shine. You know, I'm an alumni, so I know how – under, you know, cover it is and whatnot. So um, and people seem to kind of like, you know, poo-poo on Juco's a lot for no reason, don't know anything about it. Until, you know, they make it to the league and kill people. But, you know, that's a whole other subject. But, um, you know, um, I, I saw PG's home opener. Um, they have a new coach, you know, Brian Johnson, who's, you know, real cool, great guy. And uh, he came he actually came from the D1 level, um, I believe, Coffin State. So he, he's already, you know, provided a lot of structure and discipline with him. And you saw it off the break. Um, you know, they pretty much jumped on the team from break on. You know, they they trapped them. They pressed them from the get-go, and the team just couldn't handle it. And um, they beat them, you know, pretty thoroughly, 75 to 50. Um, 
you know, obviously, you know, as a coach, they're going to say they have some things to clean up. And, and that's yourself. Course. But for the first game, you know, out the gate with a lot of first-time players, a lot of freshmen, you know, they put on a good performance in front of their home crowd. Um, you know, I call them Johnson and Johnson. They're two guards. They, you know, they shine. Um, Michael Johnson, you know, you know, he came out, had 15 points, hitting a bunch of threes. He even hit a Steph Curry S3 from half court. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, it's in a highlight. Then, you know, Jalen Johnson, you know, the point guard, you know, he came in, he ran the show, kept everybody composed, even when Daddy Stevens made a run in the first half to take a one-point lead. After they jumped on him 10 nothing, you know, he calmed him down, got him back on the floor, and there was no looking back. Um, and then, he, you know, he had about 11 points himself and six assists, so that's what – you know, he spread the ball around. They actually have a couple of bigs you need to keep an eye on, like Jerry Stedman and Montez Ashgar. They're both about six, 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 seven bigs. Um, they can play. They can do it inside and out. And, you know, and um, I, I mean, I, I can see them doing a lot of damage in the Maryland Jugo ranks. All right, so you heard Cardell's breakdown of it, but as always, we told you guys, he's, he's there. This guy's always in the gym somewhere. So we're going to take a quick look at video from this game um, from PG and – Daddy like Stevens College Daddy out of Pennsylvania. Stevens, out of Pennsylvania. And that's coming up right here. You see it maybe for the first time right here on The Focus. Mag, Mag. First thing I want to say, mm -hmm. music on the video was better than the music we had during our first break. <laughs> 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 hey, look, I'm going to pay for that. Octavia's going to be here in the second segment. She's giving me a dirty look right now. And um, that's the other thing. Now that the video is on all the time, y'all going to see these horrible looks that she gives me. And all I try to do is just be a great friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that you can't say anything right now. <laughs> but moving on, all right, man, so GW. Hey, you're, oh, you're, you're not only do you just do the men's over there, you cover the women's too. Exactly. And it's been for what, is this year two or year, year three? Year three. Year three of covering both. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's going on with GW this year? Um, well, For those I, that, that don't follow them on a regular basis. On the men's side, obviously, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people in the basketball you know, community heard about the transition. Um, you know, they got a new head coach, Maurice Joseph, who's an assistant, been there for about six years. Um, you know, another great guy. Um Definitely knows his stuff. He's a former player on the, um, out of Michigan State, you know, um, Izzo. And, um, you know, he's bringing – he's not really changing too much, but he's also bringing a fast-paced style. He wants them to push the ball. And they have the athletes to do it. And, um, you know, I had a pleasure covering the game against Bowie State, which was a big little local test, you know. And um, it was it was actually a great game. Like, they, they went at it. Bowie State came out. And like they said, to punch them in the mouth. They had them you on the road. You said Bowie had a couple guards. Oh yeah, they definitely had a. Oh man, um, they, they, he's a D one transfer. His name Brian Kelly. He's the okay. same. He, uh, I think he came from Norfolk State. He, he's a problem. Like I see all. I see. <laughs> hey, What's the height? He about the six two, six three. But man, I see all CI double A written all over him. Like oh my, like, ooh, he could do it all. Um, but they also had some youngsters. I mean, it, it's some best, but they also had some youngsters that that came alive. Um, Deshaun Wells, a sniper. I'm uh, um, Wilson, he's a sniper. Um, David Bell, Omari George. I mean, he, they had trouble containing those guards in the first half. Stack like that. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and and you, you gotta give their post player some love. I hope I don't butcher his name. And knew him, Ebenezer. Okay, he he went to work. Like he made those guys work. He had twenty and nine. He, I remember him when he was a freshman. He was a little raw. Now he got scared. He's he's pulling out, no hesitation, fifteen feet, knocking face it down. Face up, face up, big. Oh, going on the you know, block, blocking shots, rebounding. Like I mean, you know, they they should do damage in the CIAA for sure. All right, and, and um, the GW side of things, because we know uh, Mr. Garino's no longer there. 
Yep, Garino's not there. Basically, one of arguably the best class ever, Garino, Joe McDonald, you know, Kevin Lawson, they all graduated. I'm um, actually Joe McDonald's back on staff as um, you know, coach now. That's not bad at all. Yeah, so he's helping the players make their transition. They got a lot of young guys, so that'd be good for him. Um, everybody know everything starts and ends with Tyler Kavanaugh. You know, he's a, he he has a shot to be to me, he's one of the best players in the country, period. Mm -hmm. And he has a chance to be the all A ten um player, if not the um player of the year. Um, I, I think he has an NBA future, you know, depending on what he do this year. I think he's that good. And if you ask anybody that's competed against him during the season, can the lead, they'd be the first to tell you. And Kevin, though, he's a four? He's a four, okay. yeah. And, um, but it's, it starts and ends with him, but he had help. Like when they was on the you know, ropes, mm -hmm. they have a transfer, uh, Patrick Steves. I think he came from Harvard. Okay. He gave him good quality minutes. He, um, he scored to kind of keep them – Close when it looked like Bowie State was trying to separate, and then um, a freshman y'all need to keep an eye on who who caught up caught me, even me by surprise. Colin Smith, athlete, six ten center, um, he was everywhere blocking shots, dunking, shooting jumpers. He seemed like he belonged, and I see why he's starting. You know, even in the first game, so the impact was you know from their, from their front line was crazy. And then in the second half, the guards woke up, they calmed everything down. Um, they, they held Bowie State guards in check for the most part where they can get the lead. And then GW's other, you know, star y'all need to look at, Utah Watanabe. Mm -hmm. hey, he, he pretty much finished them off. I think he had about uh, four points at half. He finished with 19. Like, he went to work in the second half. You so know. What, what part of his game do you think that you've seen early? I know it's only been one game. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he, he and Jim's a lot. What's the first noticeable thing that came in, you know, popped into your eye that he's spent time working on in terms of aspects of his game? Watanabe? Yes, sir. Or oh, ball handling. Okay. Like, he went coast to coast a few times. Like, he blocked, um, I think it was Deshaun West. He blocked his shot, grabbed the ball, dribbled in between the defense and got the and one layup. Last year, he would have had trouble. He might have turned it over or threw a bad pass. Mm -hmm. He's more sure of himself now. Like, he, he knows, like, it's, you know, I got to be a leader. And you see it written all over, over his face. So, you know, those two, you know, he pretty much closed out the game at Bowie State. I mean, you know, I mean, GWB Bowie State, 86-60. And, um, but it was a great game, which more people could have saw. All right, man. So, that's what you spent your time doing mm -hmm. this past weekend. Uh, a couple of our guys went over to uh, College Park to see the Maryland woman. Try to, you know, highly touted freshman class, number one class in the country. Um, it was great. Got a chance to see him, obviously, against lesser competition. But, you know, with freshmen, right. you never know how freshmen can react to it. None of them looked like it was, the moment was too big for them. Right. Um, there's a couple that I think – and I've been telling people, a lot of people this, and anybody knows me, I'm a huge UConn fan, right. which I don't sh keep from anybody. I'm open <laughs> about that. Hashtag bleed blue, hungry huskies, all that good stuff. But um, I definitely think Maryland has a, a two-year window. Like, I, I think – well, I think it could possibly be longer than two. Or I think the window's opening for Maryland. Um, I definitely don't think UConn's going to be what they were after losing that class. You want to talk about losing classes? Yeah. Because um, it's going to be a moment to learn about themselves. Transition. And with this Maryland team, and this is not to take a shot at any of the past Maryland teams, this one's pretty – this one has the potential to be pretty special. You have arguably the best post player in the country. You got arguably one of – you easily have one of the best wing players in the country. Mm -hmm. And Shatori, yeah, she's Kimber. one of the best shooters in the country. Um, from long range, and you know, just just knowing basketball just a little bit, you got a dominant big, you got a wing that can shoot from outside. Those two pieces by themselves are already great pieces. Um, but the freshman class, like you know, I'm always really hard on point guards. Right. Destiny Slocum, man, fell in love with her yeah. game like in negative two seconds. It didn't take me any time. I knew she was highly touted. It was easy to get on. You know, I avoided going to do the YouTube video thing. I just wanted to see you with my own eyes since I knew we were gonna be there. And the first thing that came to me, like, she's just a – she's a point guard. Like, you know, somebody, like, really has a feel for the position is when they take pride in all the little things. She's diving on the floor for loose balls against two schools that, you know, exhibition schedule. Right. Um, and, no, I'm not going to put the scores out there. Y'all not going to get me. Um, the scores were pretty bad. But no, their freshman no. class stayed in. They played in the second half. And in the first exhibition game, they went on a 72-0 run in the second half. And it was the freshman's fault. It wasn't Shatori. It wasn't Bree. It was the little kids' fault. The little kids refused to give an inch to a team where it was so bad. Maryland fans were rooting for the other team to get a basket. And the little kids did not want to give a, an inch of any ground at all. So I'm looking forward to see what they do this season. But, you know, point guards are a huge part of any team. And, and 
I think they have a true blue, like a blue chip floor general. And Slocum, yeah, she's special. Um, I actually saw her at the uh, Jordan Classic, the girls' surprise, game. Surprise, surprise. And um, like in April, and, and you know, you know, I New York she had yeah. Brooklyn standing up, you know, going crazy. Mm-hmm. So when you, you know, when you're doing that, you could play. So I was definitely excited that she was going to Maryland. And couldn't wait to see. So now that you're telling me, man, that. look, just you know. You know how John takes pride in his passes, the mm-hmm. little passes, the passes with a little bit of touch, the, the passes that have some nuance on them. Right. Oh, my goodness. Like, you know how a quarterback might manipulate a defense by looking off the safety. Right. She's a freshman, and she had a couple times she had one of her teammates on a wing, clearly open. She refused to pass it early. She wanted to make sure that that open shot went from a good shot to a great, great look. She moved the defense even further over to the right. As if she was about to tag, moving with her eyes, looking looking at the big, knowing that her teammate was there the whole time. Um, and it's great watching how much, again, early on, and not too much to be taken from it, but her te- like it's her team. Right. Like, like she's allowed to run the show. She has the keys to that car, and she's allowed to run it as she sees fit. And it's going to be fun because your point guard is really important to any team. Yeah, especially um, at Like, very level. important. Huge. And her energy level is crazy. Like, Two minutes left diving on the floor. Why are you still talking and, like, excited that, that late in the game when you're easily up by 50? But, you know, it's big. But what we're going to do is, like I said, we were at College Park. Um, take a quick look at this video. Just, just I was there with Donnell and Sean. Um, Sean has a gallery coming up this week as well. Um, and he has a great picture. I'm going to share this with you of Destiny making this pass. It's a no-look pass and expression on her face. Like you said, you can see the New York in her game mm-hmm. on that pass. But um, like I said, we're going to take a quick look take a look at this video um, from Maryland, just talking about what, as you said, coaches talk earlier, mm-hmm. what coaches find things that are wrong. Yeah. And some of the players found things, too. And it, it was the freshmen talking, too. Okay. So pretty good, pretty good. Wilson Tarpe Jr. here at the Xfinity Center in College Park, Maryland. The Maryland Lady Terrapins just wrapped up their two-game exhibition schedule, both of which resulted in very lopsided wins. Today, they wound up beating Mary Baldwin 153-227. First, it was Blair Watson in the first game, very close to a triple-double, having one heck of a game. Today, it was Jenna Stady with 25 points and eight rebounds. Mary Baldwin's a very, very small team. That's all his players. Uh, two of them at 5'10", which is the size of some of Maryland's guards and smaller wing players. So as you can imagine, the 6'6", Stady didn't have any issues once she established position or caught the ball in the post. And it was great to watch her teammates surround her and, and, and congratulate her and, and give her so much confidence every time she scored in the post. For Maryland, it's easy to look at the box score from two of these, both of these games and decide that they don't have anything to work on, that they're a finished product, and that's very far from the case. They have so many new plays new faces. Aisha Small along with the six-member freshman class. They have to get things together. Aisha mentioned after the game that they have to get things a little bit tighter on defense. Destiny Slocum, the freshman point guard, mentioned in the post-game presser that they were working on executing their sets. They have to working on defending the three-point line a little better and knocking down their free throws. As we all know, once they get to playing stiffer competition, especially in the Big Ten, and eventually, should things go right in the NCAA tournament, to avoid what happened last season, they're going to have to take care of the little things. Some 
some ambition. ambition. Let my thoughts flow through the pen and paper with hopes that they listen. listen. But this kitchen was never gave. Worked hard, felt slave to the industry. The enemy, my enemy became. Focused on making hits. I lost myself. The pressure started to hit. Really off myself. When you busy trying to fit in, you forget to stand out. They want to be in the circles. You make the circle, they stand round. The exact difference between a starter and star. They display the position. We've reinventing the laws. Just like that. Forgives me for all of my sinning. They tell me that my dreams are gonna leave me dead or locked up in prison. Prison. Well, if I die, remember me like Pac and Biggie. If I'm locked, remember me like Max. I'm really feeling like it's more to this rap shit. So my niggas, that is more than just this trap shit. But I ain't knocking the hustle, go and get it by any means. I used to be slinging, thinking I gotta get the green money fiend. But my dreams got closer, eyes got wider, cause the digits got bigger. With my niggas, I'ma divide it. So a nigga stop pushing dope. Now the only thing a nigga is pushing is hope. I done seen the short side of the rope, and I can't stop here. And see the live a dream, I die inside of a nightmare. And welcome back to The Focus. I'm back now. Wilson was talking a lot of trash. Uh-oh. So y'all know I had to get him. Uh-oh. And he knows exactly why I played the song I played. So I apologize in advance. <laughs> but um, thank you for, uh, you know, tuning back in. So we're definitely going to get into everything else that's going on in the sports world because it's always stuff going on. So, of course, we have to start with the NFL. So, of course, why not start with the one team that, you know, we knew were coming up and we knew that they would be good, but would they be this good? Let's start with the Raiders. The Raiders are out there just embarrassing people. They got their punter dancing all over the place. <laughs> hey, look, we got two resident Bronco fans. And, 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 that's why Cardell looking down. We got Chris back here looking down. But um, right, swaggiest punter ever. Look. Ever. I watched ever. the game. You guys just wait. Ever. Don't you, you Cardell, just you want a comedy? You want us to show the clip oh, of the dancing first? Say, I got a lot <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Do you want to see him dance one more time? Go ahead and get the dance all the way. All right. Way, Without further ado, we're going to watch Marquette King. You know what I'm saying? Get his boogie on, okay. mount the horse, ride it off the field. A couple Hit times. all Von Miller's greatest. Okay. <laughs> Cup it up. Marquette King. Ready to punt. His second of the night. Try to drop it inside the 10 if he can. Oh, and he does. Beautiful. Andre Holmes went down there to play receiver. Mark King does a little celebrating, and <laughs> why not? Go on with it. He is the king. <laughs> yeah, swaggies, punter, ever. Ever. So you want me to get into it? No. I mean, All right, okay, look, I'm going to give credit to the Raiders. They came <laughs> to play. Okay, they... 
it, you know, I'm going to get to the punt in a second. They came to play. <laughs> like, they – I mean, we, we couldn't even move the ball <laughs> in the first quarter. I was like, come on, are you serious? Like, we look scared to even catch the ball. Mm. They came out with a lot of energy, obviously, playing the Oakland. I mean, it's serious. It's always serious. And, you know, the history of the rivalry and whatnot. Um, I feel like David Carr, he's not getting enough credit. And he's Derek. a problem. Yeah. I mean, Derek, I mean, yeah, you know what I mean? He's a problem. Like, he's a swoof. Great I mean, you know, like Stephen A. Cole, Aaron Rodgers is a bad man. He He's the next bad man. Like, oh, man. And, and then running back, that tandem. Latavius and then the two little 5'8 ones. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and they was down. Like, I saw they had the ball 41 minutes, and we had it 19. Our defense, to me, our defense did great under them circumstances because they kept the game in hand when it looked like they was – I mean, I, I, I'll be honest. I turned it off, though. We was going to get smacked. But then, um, you know, keeping up with it, I saw on my phone – we had a shot, but I mean, our defense can't keep carrying us. Our offense got to wake up sometime, and I mean, you know, it is what it is. Good win, you know. But we'll see him about how asked for that kicker. He he asking for that Richard Sherman work. He, 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 <laughs> hey, he's, he's been hey. like this for a while. So just because they winning now, he needs a Richard Sherman work. Okay. He's like he's been consistent. Okay. He's been one of the few Raiders doing a job over the last. And he's gonna be out a while. For, for <laughs> Has he been dancing like that all season? Crit walking. He never does. Yeah, because uh, we just saw it. Where, where, where is it? Where? Where you so to the where, 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 <laughs> Exactly. So now he won't be gassed up. So, but it's all good. Like he's it's been okay. dancing. He's like, all punters and kickers dance. We, he just happens to be one in the league with rhythm that knows all the late Just moves. know we had have, we have some dudes that love to hit ass cam. So <laughs> we going to put him on the line. Then you see he ain't going to be dancing. He rolling around. Just, just know why. So and they might as well just bring a backup punter with them. And if I'm Kubiak, I'm like, I don't know. I act stupid. I'm like, I don't know why. <laughs> All right, yep. since y'all brought up the Richard Sherman thing, man, um, just real quick, we're going to keep it real simple because I think everybody in sports already blew this, you know, went too far with it already. Mm -hmm. So dirty play or not? Like, it's dirty or not? That's it. And we're going to move on. I won't say it was dirty. Um, I don't think he maliciously did it. I just think he's like that type of player that he tries to go all out all the time. I don't think that he purposely did that. But, um, I mean, he has to take responsibility for it. it you know, the way that it looked, it could have really injured the, the the kicker. So, he needs to take responsibility for it. I won't say that it was, like, premeditated or anything like that. You know, I just think that it happened. He claims he didn't hear the whistle. You know, it happens. But I think he needs to take, you know, responsibility for it. And, then, of course, the whole media and memes going back and forth and, and videos between uh, – it was uh, Carpenter's wife – and him going back and forth and, you know, the Bills tweeting out uh, what the actual definition of unnecessary roughness is and, and showing the picture and everything. And, of course, the league coming out saying that he should have been penalized. He wasn't. You know, they're looking into it, of course, but it's done now. It's nothing they can pretty much do about it. Game's over. They lost. They won. But I don't think he was a malicious, dirty play, but I definitely think he, you know, could have did something different. Cardell, who's already trying to send the goons out for my man. <laughs> oh, you're going to get that word, believe me. Trust him. Hit him like Sean Taylor hit that kick in the Pro Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he hit that word. I'm, I'm simply going to say he's a former wide receiver. I doubt he's going to sit there and not have his head on the okay. swivel. That's but, true. He might try to lower his shoulder. Yeah. Nah, he just might just <laughs> avoid the hit. Right? Okay. Um, to the Sherman thing. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a little, it was iffy, mm -hmm. but I've seen worse. I'm not, you know, it's not nothing to really blow up over. Plus, I, I felt like the kicker had time to not kick. I think he 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 acted a little bit too to try to draw the flag. We didn't get it and all that. I mean, come on, man. Like, you know, he's supposed to play all out. And I understand Richard Sherman's logic. I'm not going to give him a free kick to get, you know, kind of a rhythm so he can make the kick. I'm not giving him nothing. So, I mean, he's not a dirty player, so I give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, if he if he was a repeat offender, like, um, what's my man from the Bengals or something like Perfect. that, then, yeah, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, nah, I mean, it's, what, it's not that big of a deal to me. He'd be all right. All right, yeah, I definitely disagree with all of you. Um, he barrel rolls. You don't block kicks by barrel rolling. Um, so, yeah, dirty. Continue on <laughs> and I'm not I mean, no, dirty player. I'm you're right, player. you're right. That's like, what I mean. Like barrel roll rolls, bruh. You didn't stick out your condor like wingspan with your hands flat out. You barrel rolled. But hey, like I said, keep it short. We're going to keep it moving. What's next, next Miss White? Well, I really don't want to talk about this next team, but I guess I have to. Yes, you do. I do. Uh, the Cowboys are 7 to 1. Oh, God. You know, it hurts my heart to say it, but we, we must remember it's not December yet. You know, you know how they go in December. But 
They are seven and one, so you have to give credit where credit is due. You know, I'm not that much of a petty person (laughs) to kind of not give them their props. You know, the Cowboys are playing well on all cylinders. You know, their defense is holding up. Uh, Of course, the the rookies are holding their own. Dak is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like, it kind of goes back to, you know, when the season first started and, you know, they were comparing the rookie quarterbacks, of course, Carson and Dak. And, of course, they were holding up, but – at the same time, it's like, you know, when is it going to, you know, when is it going to change as far as is he going to have a setback or anything like that? Because it doesn't look like it at all. And, of course, you know, with the best O-line in the in the league, you know, it's going to be a lot easier for him. Not saying that that's the main reason why, because, you know, he's like I said, he's doing his thing, you know. But, you know, and then Zeke is running all over the place. Just like it's like he can't be stopped, really. And it's, it's kind of crazy, especially because he's a rookie, you know. Yeah, a lot of times in the league, you know, they're looking to send a message to the rookies, and it doesn't seem like he's got yeah, that message yet. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he's gotten that message yet. So I, I feel like the only thing that can really have them take a step back is this whole quarterback controversy to figure out if Romo's going to start playing or if they're going to leave Dak in. You know, for my own petty reasons, I would love Romo to come back. <laughs> but, you know, if they're smart, they'll leave Dak in. You know, let them ride out. Let them see what happens, you know, if – Something comes up, you have a veteran quarterback to kind of come in and but kind of right. clean it up and stuff like that. So if the Cowboys are smart, they'll leave them. But, you know, they got Jerry Jones, so you never know. Cardell, your thoughts on the 7-1 and Dallas Cowboys? <laughs> I, I don't. America's team. <laughs> I know. I hated to or, do or it, too. Or you can choose no comment. Like, that is awesome. No, I got a lot to say because I'm tired <laughs> of these Cowboys fans messing with me, man. It, look, look. How y'all gonna talk trash? Y'all haven't won nothing since we were elementary school. Like, calm that, like, chill. Okay, they seven and one. I give them credit. I like that. Um, I like the fact that you know every little challenge just came up. Even when his owner didn't even endorse him at first, he mm-hmm. still came out performing. He's in to the point. His, Jerry Jones has to shut up because he can't. His you know he can't do. He can't meddle right now until Dak loses. So right now they're on fire. Um, I I can't. As far as the team, I can't. Don't no negativity. It's their fans. I just can't stand. That's fair. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, it's the fans. They 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 get on my nerves. Um, it's seven <laughs> and one. It's a lot of season left. Uh, and I'm really praying that Romo does take his job so it can go right down the hill. I'm and, telling and, y'all, and December is coming. Everybody, yeah, y'all just don't want Dak to like keep it going. No, I want Dak to. I just want to shut the fans up because oh, every yeah, sick, yeah, it's yeah. I, I just want to okay. get that. Down. I mean, just for the sake that I would like to kind of maybe get to the playoffs, my team. <laughs> so you, so, you're you coming know. for totally personal reasons. Yeah, it's petty. Right. You can't help it. Um, <laughs> Matt Jones is no longer this Redskins starting running back. Um, shout out to Robert Kelly, which a lot of Redskins fans like in Redskins Twitter. Some people are like this should have been like this all year. Um, hey. Uh, change has been made. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was made. I think it was a good choice. Yeah. You know, they're both kind of similar, uh, slightly. But um, you know, the biggest thing is you can't turn the ball over. Yeah, exactly. You know, those turnovers are going to kill you, especially you know in the Detroit game where he fumbled right at the goal line. So it's like you can only give somebody so much room to kind of have you know issues like that. So the number one thing they always tell you is protect the ball. So like it don't matter how far you run, if you run all the way down there and drop the ball, it was pointless. So, you know, they're going with the safe bet. And then as far as, you know, he's a safe bet as far as not fumbling, of course. But, you know, he's still a top-tier, you know, kind of running back for them, you know, to kind of make sure that they still have a good running game. So, I think it was a no-brainer for real, for real. And, um, you know, Gruden is saying that, you know, it can change at any time. You know, Matt Jones can still work his way back into the rotation. But as of right now, everything runs through Kelly. All right. Cardell? I mean, I agree. Um, I actually think – I mean, the piggyback off her, the fumbles, that's what killed him. If he'd have held on to the ball, you he'd, know, he'd, he'd have had a spot. Yeah, but um, I actually think Kelly's a little bit more shifty. Um, a lot of times, um, Jones, he run into the pile, and he and, and that's it. But Kelly, he'll hit the pile, shift and bounce it to the outside, get an extra couple yards, and he run – like, they run hard, but he runs like – like like, like Rudin said, he's gonna cut him, and you know at the end of the game, that's his last game. And not like he runs hard, like and you saw that in London. I was like, geez, you know. So, so um, I mean, he earned it, but it's up to him to keep it. Like 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 she said, if he he get to turning the ball over to Chris Thompson, gonna be next up. But, <laughs> you know how the, you know we talk about it all the time that scouting report. Now he's gonna be scouted, so they're gonna be waiting for him. So we'll see how he handle that. But I think he's gonna be fine, and they gotta do what they gotta do. They got one game, so I'm not mad at that move at all. All right, moving on from the NFL. And, yeah, it's a little short NFL this week. But um, 
Yeah, That's gonna flush away it. from week to week. <laughs> yeah, because I'm over it. Uh, well, hey, blame Octavia. I'm ba- I'm on your bandwagon. I'm over it. You know oh, how you was over. Yeah, I'm oh, over man, it. I'm, I'm so far in the leap as like I stopped my life last night to watch Steph hit 13 threes. Man. Because like, hey, look, somebody told me like our guy Eddie was gonna call in later. He was like, yeah, man, I was watching the Seattle game. I was like, you can't watch it past halftime. <laughs> I was like, I saw Twitter burning up about Steph. I was like, well then. Mm-hmm. Let me stop what I'm doing. Close this laptop. <laughs> Go see what stuff is talking head about. On my pillow, sitting there looking on my phone, like, wow, you guys just he's just gonna keep going. Yeah. So, real quick before we get into the main NBA topic of today, mm-hmm. which is a great one. Shout out to Cardio for that. Uh, and we're gonna talk about. We're just gonna mention some of the players that are flying under the radar because we got about ten minutes left to show, and we got Eddie calling in in a little bit. So, you know, speed this up real quick. Steph hitting 13 threes. One, are you surprised? And two, will he surpass that? One, I'm not surprised. Two, he will surpass it. Cardell. Nope. And nope. So he's going to stay quick. He's going to stay around there. Right, I'm kind of with, no, I'm not surprised. And I do think 13 is going to stay. 13 is kind of tough. I feel like he'll, yeah, I feel like he'll get one more than that. Because I feel like he's not going to stop. At the same time, 13 for 17 is crazy. But um, I mean, he took seventeen, and you know, mostly all the ones that he take look good. I mean, but those like so one or two might have rattled that, out. Number thirteen was very ignorant. Right? <laughs> it's Steph. What do you expect? But yeah. you came up with this topic. You, you had a whole list of players. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask you. We're gonna give you guys some homework. All right. So we're not gonna tell you about. We're not gonna go into deep, deep breakdown of each and every one of these players. Simply going to share with you some players that, you know, obviously everybody's looking at, you know, the point guards are going crazy right now. Russ is having a crazy start to the year. We got Kyrie's having a good start. LeBron's being LeBron as usual. Um, We got some other suspects out there. We got Anthony Davis going nuts on maybe one of the league's worst teams ever. Um, We got Boogie going crazy in Sacramento. Oh, yeah. And we know nobody ever watches that. Shout out to them for beating the Raptors. Mm -hmm. That was a big win, you know, just... It's because y'all don't watch Sacramento. You know, <laughs> I feel like somebody should say something about it. But a quick list of players who are quietly cooking this year, who I promise y'all, a whole bunch of y'all might be fans of these teams ain't paying no attention to. Better start so, looking. We, we going to start. Octavia, you want, you want to start with a, a couple? Yeah, I can throw a couple names out right. there. So uh, a lot of people probably haven't really watched uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. I, I've been a fan of him when he was in New York. Um, I definitely think he's a solid player. I was kind of upset when they let him go, but, you know, you get it. But he's a definite solid solid player. You know, he can hit hit the outside shot. He plays top-notch defense. You know, he's that type of all-around player that I like. I like the type of person that's, you know, kind of well-rounded, not saying that you have to be great in each aspect, but you can hold your own in each aspect. And I feel like he's that type of player. So, you know, that's one of the ones that I like the most. Um, and then one other that, you know, I'm kind of partial to just because of knowing a couple of people that he knows, uh, Sean Kilpatrick of the Nets, you know, I've seen him since college, you know, he's kind of, uh, very close to one of my close friends. So, uh, he, you know, the fact that he really worked hard to get there, you know, he flew under the radar for a long time. After having a really good college career. Correct. Yeah. And it was like, it was really hard for him to kind of get his foot in the door and to kind of see, you know, that the Nets are, like, embracing him now. And, I like, you know, he actually got posters up and stuff around the <laughs> around the arena and things now. So, you know, to see that he's actually, you know, stepping it up and being that type of player for them, you know, of course, being on the Nets is, is kind of hard. But, um, you know, I definitely feel like he's one of those players that's been kind of flying under the radar that some people need to watch out for. All right, Cardell? Um, a lot of people don't even realize um, he's actually coming to town, Avery Bradley, um, He's out of the 19. Avery Brown's a full assist. Like, that's all-star worthy. Yeah, I don't um, know how he's still flying on um, the radar. And you know his defense is elite. He Stop on ball. Notch. Yeah, so <laughs> I think he got a shot at the all-star game if he maintains this. And um, a lot of people hated him when he was with the Pacers. But George Hill, I got to look at George Hill. He's averaging 20. He, he, I mean, he's averaging 20 points a game. He, you know, <laughs> hey. <laughs> if he did it. Credit, that's, like, look, that's the thing here. We do bag on a lot of people. We do. And we do if, bag on him. <laughs> if you shut us up, look, man, we're not going to act like you're not cooking. You, yeah. And, you are mentioned right now. You are cooking, and he's a great thing for a young Utah team right now. Got to give him credit. And mm-hmm. he's efficient. Like, I'm yeah. looking at 54% from the field, 43 from three, 87 from the free throw line. Enough said, man. That, that, that's why they're winning. So, I mean, those are the guys for me. Oh, and, um, and Dwight Howe, his resurgence. I kind of thought with the Andrews, it took his toll. I mean, he's back with Avengers. Like he's looking like the best center in the East again. I mean, he, he well, he's averaging seventeen and twelve. 
You know what I'm saying? He's not even playing like he was only playing 28 minutes a game. What if he's playing maximum minutes like a franchise center? He could easily average 25 <clears throat> and 15 or something like that. So, I mean, it's, and, you know, he changed the whole complexion of the East because you didn't expect him to be like that with the whole. So, you know, those are my guys. Yeah, I definitely like Dwight. Though. I feel like I feel like he's the type of player that he just needs to be in a good space. Yeah. Like he's that type of player. Like you know, I feel like he could have thrived in in uh, L. A. and all those other places he was at. But he just he's that type of emotional player that like he needs like a good core around him, like people to kind of keep him lifted up and things. And I feel like him being back in his hometown has just like helped him a whole lot. Like. Probably you know, like really therapeutic. Yeah, I really feel like that's the type of player that he is. So yeah, he's definitely balling out down there too. Plus, he got guards that pass on the ball. The way, I <laughs> yeah, on regular basis too. Like, a yeah, yeah. like hey, we have a big like, man down like, there. Do you want the ball? Like, I heard this crazy thing. Like when bigs play with guards, they give him the ball. Like they want to do the other big men stuff. Yeah, like this is crazy rumor. Hey. I heard. Like I don't know. Like it's an interesting hypothesis. We need to test it out. Um, my guys, obviously, the easy one might be uh, Giannis. Yeah, um, but Greek I'm, I'm going to not go there since everybody's already over there. Jabari Parker. Yeah. I got to shout out Jabari Parker because he's actually, he's literally right now the guy everybody thought he was mm-hmm. or wanted him to be when he got drafted mm-hmm. pre-injury. That's Jabari right now. I forgot who they lost to the other night, but Jamari, Jabari scored like the first, like 11 of their first 15. He's a dog, and they bro. had no answers at the four. His size, like I give him credit for what he did to his body. It's not baby fat anymore. He has lift to it. There's explosiveness. When he turns and face, he, it's like he has a well-rounded offensive game. Oh, yeah. It's not just turn, face, shoot. Like he, he can bang with you now. I just, I just want to shout him out for really, really taking that step. Because as I mentioned, it'd be easy to talk about Greek Freak. But a lot of those assists, man, Jabari's not there. Those assists go down just a little bit. You just give him a little bit of love. The other guy I want to talk about is uh, I always talk about them two light-skinned dudes in Golden State. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about that light-skinned dude in Phoenix. Young Devin Booker. Mm. And, and that's the guy right there. I know, like, a lot of people that, and it bothered me so much when, like, young Brad came out, people try to, like, compare him to young Ray. And it just didn't gel well too. It didn't, it didn't fit too well for me. Personally, I love Devin Booker's game. Like, he can really shoot it. He has enough handle to get you up off him. I just really love his game. And, again, he's playing on the team that nobody's going to watch. But I, I think that's really my two guys. I, I don't really think I have a, a third. Okay. John Simmons from the Spurs, but I think we talk I mean, about yeah, him he, every 10 seconds. So, <laughs> um, I mean, like this year so far, on your podcast, John Simmons is like a popular name. Yeah, he, um, yeah. I guess, all right, my last one I'm just going to give a little credit to is Mary Titch on the Bulls because a lot of Bulls fans gave this dude a whole lot of ish mm-hmm. for, for not being what they wanted him to be or how he was playing with those other players. With these two play, the veteran playmakers he's playing with right now, Mm-hmm. He looks like an offensive weapon that everybody thought he could be when he's going to come over here. But what we're going to do is take a quick break, and when we get back, we got the Petty Eddie section coming up. My he's favorite. He's calling in. It's going to be a blast. I can't wait to see what he has to rant about. And then we're going to call it quiz, man. It's going to be the – we're going to end the very first edition of The Focus right here on Blissol FM, but we're going to be right back. Give us literally like 60 seconds, and we're going to have Eddie on the phone, and it should be wonderful. It really should. Let's see if I could not play a song I tell you to play. Oh, see, here we go. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. You're still here. Look at here you. we are. The world is ours. From the bucket we're in the road. But I'm taking the throne, irreplaceable things, so it's just higher I go. Messed up memories of the struggle, but I'm out of it. And all the goals now made my struggle so irrelevant. Love by few, hated by many. Sober thoughts leak when handed bottles of brandy. Say you never said that, oh, but you drink a lot. When you behind me, you hate me. Must be that the rock. But the fakes up on the wagon when they see I don't stop. On the stage doing shows, hear my music in your pocket lock. Damn, they think I came this far from the struggle. And all these haters fail because they ain't even bring trouble. And I ain't with the drama. Fighting leaves you in a puddle. Boy, don't worry about my numbers. Every track is doing doubles, man. I'm saying you. From the bottom to the top, it can only get better as long as I don't stop. Welcome back to The Focus. Hey, I got it right. I was about to say my final sports. 
I got it right. But we got our guy, Eddie McDonald, calling in, a.k.a. Petty Eddie. But before he gets going with the Petty Eddie segment today, the very first here on The Focus, just want to have a few. Man, look, it's our show, shameless plug time. When you get a chance, get over to findestmag.com. I believe I got that right, Cardell? Findestmag.com. I told you I'd be over there a little, little bit. Um, <laughs> my model sports.com too. Same thing, man. Just Google us, man. We all over social media. It's the same thing. It's real easy. And we need y'all to fill up this focus social media account. We need this. We want to start a section where you guys, we're going to have a section in the show. And this is up to you guys. Like, we can only do it if y'all want to participate. Y'all bring us a topic, something that's bothering you in sports. We will discuss it on air in that segment. And we'll have your tweets up at the bottom of the screen. It's up to you, though. If y'all don't, if y'all don't want to participate... I find something else to run my mouth about. <laughs> it's up to you. But no further ado, Eddie, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? We're great, man. We're great. So uh, is that time? The floor is yours. The first edition of Petty Eddie, of the Petty Eddie segment, right here on The Focus. All right, first and foremost, The Focus, great name. Love it. I uh, love to be a part of it. Uh, Cardell, shout out to you, all the work you do with the DMV sports. I think that's awesome. I'm a big hoop head, and I like just to see in uh, various different basketball, and your coverage is excellent of it. So shout out to you for that. Uh, and to get Petty real quick, Jerry Jones, don't be naive and start Tony Romo when he's healthy. There's no need for that. Let Dak just keep cooking. And if he is not cooking, then put Tony Romo in. You have a great backup quarterback uh, in Tony Romo since you were, since Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott are leading you to a 7-1 and record. And Octavia, you got to chill with that December nonsense. That's the Petty Eagle fan coming out of you, which I which I understand, but... Uh, we got you got to chill on that, but just let Dak keep cooking. If he goes down with injury for some reason, uh, God forbid that happens, or if he just starts playing bad, Romo can come right in. Let him be the backup. Jerry Jones, don't ruin what you have going. And with the NBA, there was a lot of NBA talk at the end of the <clears throat> of the show before I got on. First and foremost, it's early on in the season, so all the overreactions of Golden State uh, not doing this, uh, the Thunder being out. Six and one, all, all great, all not great, whatever. It's early. We're not even ten games into the season yet, so just chill, please, just chill. Especially with the Warriors, I promise you they will be just fine. It, like I said, it's early, uh, and I don't think I was talking with Wilson the other day. I don't think that neither of us thought that they understood fully what they're getting with Kevin Durant. A lot of people just said, "Oh, great scorer, going to another great scoring team." I don't think he went there, but that's, uh, I'll talk about that here shortly. Uh, but. They're fine. He is an overall basketball player that's great. Who can score, move the ball, and play defense. And without him playing defense on Anthony Davis last week, they lost. They would lose to the Pelicans. And without Steph going nuts last night, they probably would have lost. But shout out to Steph for breaking the record. And to answer the question you guys asked earlier, I'm not surprised. And he will break his own record at some point, maybe even this season. But back to the Warriors, they're going to be just fine. Once they figure out that Kevin Durant has one of the highest basketball IQs and can move the ball, uh... Clay is not going to be shooting bad all season. They're going to figure out the defense. They'll be fine. Everyone just needs to chill on that front. The NFL officiating, trash. Absolutely trash. Uh, they, uh, they talked about earlier in the show, the trash. How do they mess up that bad every time they're in Seattle? The uh, fail Mary a few years ago with the uh, replacement refs, trash. And then this incident uh, last night, trash. How do you not call either roughing the kicker or... Uh, unnecessary roughness. I don't care if he was playing to the whistle, call something. And then you don't get the clock management right, so they get a delay of game, so they move back the five yards they got for the offside. Trash. And the NFL wonders why uh, the viewership is going down. The officiating has to do with it. A lot of games have been decided because of the officials, and that is not right. Not saying last night was, uh, but it certainly did help in the favor of Seattle, which they always seem to get that home cooking. Walt Anderson and his crew should be suspended and fined for a weekend or two weekends. I don't care what it is. They need to be disciplined. That's ridiculous. They should not get that wrong, especially when the NFL comes out and makes a statement. Yep, that should have been penalized. You don't say. Everyone watching at home should have said that, in which a lot of people probably tuned out after halftime, like Wilson said, I should have. And uh, here's one real quick thing. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, always is. But how foolish does the Thunder look? Because they drafted Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and Jeff Green. Now they only have Russell Westbrook, which is great in the long run for them in a sense because him and Kevin Durant weren't working together, weren't going to. Two entirely different players, two alpha males. Russ needs the ball. He can't uh, play off ball. He needs the ball in his hands, and it's working wonders for him so far. Six and one, 
and he will average a triple double this season. And real quick, just a couple quick hits. Blake Bortles is also trash. I rescind my statements from earlier this uh, season on him. Trash. And the Lakers will contend for a playoff spot. They'll be in the 7 through 10 seeding. Uh, obviously, 8 make the playoffs, but they'll be right there. Young, fun team. Uh, big win over Golden State last week. And real quick, shout out to my dude BJ Andrews, uh, a DMV product out of McDonough School in Baltimore. Uh, he went. He goes to my alma mater of Clarion. Senior <clears throat> was predicted to be a uh, preseason All uh, PSAC team member, and he scored 16 points in an exhibition against Kentucky last Sunday. Uh, shout out to him. Good luck to him this season. And shout out to the focus. Teddy Eddie out. Hey, look, man, we appreciate you for the first episode. Look forward to many more. It's going to be a great way to end the show every week. But, Eddie, I'm sure I will talk to you shortly. But if everybody, make sure you follow Eddie at Eddie McDonald. Uh, I'm sorry, at King Edward 15. I'm so sorry to mess up Petty Eddie's. Uh, you need to go ahead and just get that uh, Petty Eddie Twitter handle. I, I'm going to be working on that. So it's easier for me to plug you. Um, also, he got NFL note, Notebook probably dropping tomorrow or Thursday. AllMyModelSports.com. Eddie, thank you so much for everything you do. And we can't wait to hear what you're going to be upset about next week. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning into the focus. We had a blast. It's been wonderful. Um, it was just the first go round. Definitely share the feedback. Follow us on social media. Um, definitely follow Finest Mag. Follow some amount of sports. It's really easy, man. Just those three things shouldn't be able to go round go wrong. Um, and we want y'all to really join the conversation here. We are pleading with y'all to do it on my mind of sports. Y'all always want to talk to me when I see you. You message me on Tuesday nights for an hour. Talk, speak. It's okay. We implore you to do so. Same with Cardell. Y'all always want to talk. Tuesday nights. Shoot a text, tweet, something. IG will respond. But thank you so much. And shout out to our guy Rodney, man. Really working to make this all possible so y'all can see this on this live stream thing. Um, so uh, yeah, with that being said, um, it's the end of the first episode of the focus. We we'll catch y'all next week, same time, same place, all that good stuff.